Hey friends, welcome back to the craft castle. We are about to get really messy and I have no idea what I'm doing. I kind of have a thought in my brain of what I want, but I have no idea what I'm doing. So I have a guest room that has this like huge blank wall and there's nothing on it and I kind of want to put something in it and it's a guest bedroom so I kind of want it to be like yay you're here or you've been missed or stay a while anyway so I have been seeing these textured canvases online a little bit and they are wildly expensive I will show you um but I kind of want to DIY my own textured canvas so anyway I picked up a really large 24 by 48 canvas from Hobby Lobby. It's actually $16.99, which is like fairly cheap and it's huge. Like, hello, this thing is huge. It's large and in charge. And I think it's going to fit well in the wall of this guest bedroom. So I'm going to do a little bit of experimenting and see what I can come up with. I'm really hoping <laughs> that this is going to be a craft success versus a craft fail, but you never know until you try. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so before we get started on prepping the canvas and doing all the other random things that I think I'm going to need, just wanted to kind of show you what my thought process was. Maybe, you know, along the way, if you have any other suggestions for me, you can just leave them in the comments of this video because who knows if this is actually gonna turn out or not. Fingers crossed. I'm doing, doing a crafting prayer here. Okay, so McGee and Co is one textured canvas that I found. And do you see this price right here? It's $937 on sale. Like, what? And then Crate and Barrel has something kind of similar for $849. Like, and it's 41 by 51, which I mean, granted, it's going to be like taller than the one I have because the one I have is 24 by 48, but like, are we really paying, is, are people paying that price for that? Like, there's no way, there's no way. Okay, so I found this picture on the internet and this is the vibe that I'm going for. Um, it's not going to be the same lettering as mine because it's going in my guest bedroom, but I essentially want like a really big sign to hang over my guest bedroom wall that hangs horizontally because the room isn't very large. And so when you hang something like horizontally, it'll end up looking longer than it actually is. And right now there's like nothing on the walls. So the bedroom's painted blue. We have white furniture in there. I feel like a little white texture canvas would go well on that note. Uh, if this sign ends up working out, I will show you at the very end what my guest bedroom looks like because it is like teeny tiny. It's like a queen size bed filled it up. So anyways, okay. So I have that canvas that I bought from Hobby Lobby, right? And it's 24 by 48. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to use my laser cutters. When I see this picture, it looks like it's very thick lettering. And you know, at the craft stores, you can get like small little 3D letters. I think that's what this person used to make their canvas. Um, because I am more of like a budget crafter and I like to use the, I, the materials and items that I have on hand, I am going to be using my laser cutter for this. And with that, I'm going to be using wood and then Inkscape, which is a free design program. So you get, get, I'll be able to walk you through kind of my thought process on how this works because DIY crafting, I'm all about. Okay, so like I said, if you don't have like a laser cutter or anything like that, I'm thinking that this person used those like paper mache letters that you can get at the little craft stores. And I think they're only like three inches. I'm sure you can buy them off Amazon too. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna open up a blank window in Inkscape. Again, this is a free program. I love it. It's like the greatest design program ever <laughs> for being free. It's crazy. Okay, and anytime I'm working with a canvas or a wood sign or anything like that that has a particular size i always like to change the workspace so this little box right here is technically our work board and it always gets set to i believe a default of the letter size eight and a half by 11. so like if i'm using my laser cutter my laser bed's like 12 by 20 i always like to do my bed size to that just making sure that what i design will fit inside the box so the same thing goes for this canvas that i'm working on i want to make sure that the letters that I put on my canvas is gonna fit on my canvas. So how we do that is we go up here into file and we go into document properties 
And then I'm gonna come over here into units and I'm gonna change this over into inches. And the width of this, I want it to, I want the long ways to be horizontal. So that's gonna be 48 inches. And then the height is gonna be 24 inches. And I'm just pressing tab. And then when I'm done, I'm just gonna press this X button. Okay, and let's zoom out. And now when we've fixed that, do you see how now the canvas looks like a rectangle, a long rectangle? That's exactly what it is. And it doesn't look like it, but I can promise you that this rectangle right here is the exact size of what that canvas is. Okay, and referencing back over into that inspo pic that I have, it looks like it's a pretty thick font and I actually really like that. I'm not entirely sure if like a script font would go well here. I mean, I've never done one, so you know, who knows? Um, but I think it would be easier for a first try if I just did like a thicker, uh, thicker font like what they have. So all I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna insert a text box. So I'm gonna click that A and I'm just gonna put just anywhere, my cursor anywhere and click. And I'm gonna do, yay, you're here. It's small, I don't even know if I spelled that correctly. Okay, so because it's so small, I'm gonna come over here under my cursor. I'm gonna click that, making sure up here it's locked. If you don't lock this, what happens is, is that your text is gonna get all distorted. So I'm just gonna make this larger just so I can see what I'm doing. Oh yeah, I definitely spelled it right. Okay, and I think I want to add in another exclamation mark. So I just double click that text box and I did the exclamation mark. And then I kind of want the lettering to like start at the right. So I'm gonna come up here and go to the right. I think I like that. I think that's gonna be cute <laughs> if we can end up making this work. Okay, so now that I have my text laid out the way I want to, I'm gonna come over here into this top T button. I'm gonna click that and it's gonna drop over here into the right. And I'm just gonna find a font that is uh, thick and looks good, I think. My most favorite font that I that is like a thick font um, that's all uppercase is called League Gothic. I, I'm obsessed with this this font. Okay, so when you select the font that you want, just make sure and press apply. So if we come up here and like I'll choose Lauren's script and we and it won't change, you'll have to press apply first and then it'll change for you. So going back over into that League Gothic, I clicked it and then I press apply. Okay. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this arrow or the cursor tool, making sure it's locked up here again, and I'm just gonna resize this. And I think I want the letter spacing or the line spacing. I think I want the line spacing to be a little bit tighter, so I'm gonna double click back into my, into my text box, and I am just gonna change the line width just a little bit smaller. When I have that the way I want, then I'm just gonna press the cursor button again, and then I'm just resizing this. Now, here is the deal, is because remember our rectangle that we have created, that is our canvas. So if I lay this yay, you're here, down here, it's not gonna be on the canvas. So you wanna make sure you stay within your border of what we are working on. And I kinda want it to be large, but I want a little bit of breathing room. Okay, I have the lettering like I want. It is perfect for me. Um, I think this is going to be like the easiest design tutorial I've ever instructed. However, I just think that when we get over to trying to figure out how to texturize this canvas, it's gonna get a little crazy and messy. Okay, so if you were to go and save this, we'll do file and save as, if you were to save it just the way it sits. Okay, if you were to upload this file into Glowforge, what happens is, is you're gonna see this right here. It says the design is empty, there is a text, the text has been removed, there's nothing there. That's because we've missed a step. It is so important that you do this. So because this is still a text box, we never changed it to anything. We're gonna command shift and C, which is we're creating it a path. If you don't wanna use your keyboard, you can come up here into path and then object to path. And then you wanna command shift G, which is ungroup. That makes every single letter its own element. Now. That being said, if your spelling was not correct, you needed to do that before you changed it over into a path. So make sure that all the spelling is correct before you change things to path. You cannot go back in and, cha and change the text, like let's say you needed this to be like a Z. We can't change this to a Z anymore because it is now a path. Now that you have that, 
what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna save it again. So Command S, which is save. And I'm gonna go back into Glowforge. I'm gonna create a new design, upload file, find your file and upload it. Okay, now let's zoom out and look, our font is there and we no longer have that error notice, which is great. That's exactly what you needed, right? Okay, so I am going to set this over into medium maple plywood because that's what I'm gonna be using today. And then I'm gonna change this engrave over to cut because I want it all to cut. I'm gonna drag this over and bring it up into my area. And I need to go turn my Glowforge on. Okay, so generally what I always suggest is that we mask our materials. You definitely don't want any type of burning or charring on your materials. However, for this project, because I'm getting ready to cover it with some plaster, I'm not necessarily concerned about the charring. And I say that and I have no idea what I'm talking about. I guess we'll figure that out. I am not concerned about the charring for at the second. Let's move this over. And I always like to take these three dots and set focus. Even if I'm using proof grade material, I always like to set focus. I don't know if it's because my machine is old or what, but like it does not like to cut material all the way through if I haven't pressed that set focus button. Okay, so I am just rearranging all these letters, trying to make sure and conserve as much material as possible. Okay, so that's a bet. That's as, as best as I'm gonna be able to get it. So I'm gonna press ready. And then we're gonna go over to the Glowforge and we are gonna press that magic button. If you have an external fan, make sure and turn that on because otherwise that you're gonna be setting off some fire alarms. While we wait for our wood cutouts to cut out <laughs> on the laser cutter, you just essentially need to prep your canvas, which is just taking the plastic off of your canvas. When you have all your wood cutouts, what you're gonna need to do is mark straight lines across your canvas. I'm using this handy dandy laser level thing my husband bought me years ago. It's really cool. You just put it on top of the surface and it kind of suctions to it and then you can have like a laser line. I don't even know what the technical terms are. All I know is that I really like this. Okay, so then when I have the line level, I did take a fabric measuring tape and I just went across the entire canvas. I just wanted to make sure that everything was level. I never actually trust that bubble that's inside that laser level. Anyway, you just want to lay out your wood cutouts at this point, making sure that it's going to look good and everything is evenly spaced out. Okay, so for this project, I use Fusion Tack Adhesive by Super Tight. It bonds fabric to wood and since a canvas is fabric and I'm using wood for the cutouts, I feel like this is the best glue that you could possibly use for this project. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just squirting a decent amount on the back of each letter and I'm placing it onto the line and the space of what I have already set up. Okay, now working on the second line, which to be honest with you <laughs> is actually pretty hard. Thankfully I have a laser level. so. You just like measure out with a fabric measuring tape, your spacing that you want, and then you put in that, the laser level and it kind of like makes it a lot easier. It definitely was the most time consuming process just because I wanted to make sure that the line was level and the spacing was even, you know, ugh. Okay, and so you know what the most frustrating part is, is I have this evenly spaced out. I have the lines the way I want to. Everything is level, but like, did you notice that I have it kicked far over <laughs> towards the middle? And I, you know what? DIY projects can start the way you want to, and then in the middle of the project, not go the way you want to, and then you have to improvise, and this is where I improvise. So I tried to wiggle the letters off because I wanted to change my mind on the placing of this, and the glue that I used, it actually bonded really quickly. So then I had to think about what in the world I wanted to do. So I went back to my computer, designed a little bit, and I have this like sunset with waves because I do live at the beach. So I figured that something beachy in that guest room that I have is beachy. So I just did a little bit of cutouts, wood cutouts, and um, cut that, glued that, did everything I did before, and it looks a lot better in my opinion. What do you think? Okay, the hardest part is over. I promise you, I am now editing this with a finish sign and the finish sign actually looks amazing. Um, I, the hardest part is over. So all you're gonna need is some white paint, preferably 
flat white paint. So I'm just taking some really cheap craft white paint here. Later on, I'm gonna show you a different technique with paint, and I am just using flat white ceiling paint that you can get at the hardware store. So if you have that, use that, but you definitely don't want something that has a gloss to it because these canvases are supposed to be like a matte finish. So anything with sheen to it might not look so good, but I don't know, it's your DIY project. You do what you wanna do. That being said, all you wanna do is now paint over all your wood cutouts, making sure that you get the sides of it because you don't want the sides of your wood cutouts to be the dark color that it is. So make sure to cover the entire canvas area with white paint. I also, I skipped the whole paint it um, all over the canvas. I really just focused in on the letters when I was doing this step. Okay, when you're all done painting all your letters, now you just gotta let it dry. Have some patience, don't be like me, and let it all dry. My wood letters did take a little while to dry because I did do a lot of paint uh, to cover up the charring because remember, I didn't mask my wood. So I had to put a, quite a bit of paint on there, so it did take a while, so I have a new outfit. Okay, so for this next step, you're just gonna need some sheetrock material or spackling. I know people that use like uh, the color changing spackling that you get at the hardware store um, that you like fill holes in your walls with. What I'm using is the same concept, only in like a gigantic bu bucket because we do, <laughs> we do love home renovations. So we just have an ample amount of drywall plaster at the house. And you're gonna need some sort of like spatula for this. So if you have, um, you know, like drywall spatulas in your hardware toolbox. My husband has a lot, but I'm just gonna be using stuff that I found in my craft room. So I have these like paint spatula thingies that I got in like this huge kit. So I'm just using that. All you wanna do is take that drywall spackle and we are just gonna rub this on the entire canvas. It comes on gray, but then it dries a white color. So don't worry about the color, just trust me, it does turn white eventually, but you just want to make a mess with it. The whole point of this texture canvas is you want to make it messy. Um, I am putting the drywall plaster on the sides of my letter be letters because I want the canvas and the letters to look like they are one with the canvas. I don't want it to be like two separate things, like it looked like I glued something on there. So I am focusing on the sides and I'm kind of building up the sides. And then I'm also doing the tops of my letters because I do want those to be texturized as well same thing and same concept as before. I want this to look like it's one with the canvas. So you're just going to use a little bit of plaster, smear it on your letters, smear it on the entire thing of your canvas. Focus on the sides too, because your sides of your canvas needs to be texturized too for when people look at it from the sides. Um, that's it. This entire process took me about 24 minutes to do for this large of canvas. So it shouldn't take you that long just to do this one portion. When you are done, you're gonna wanna let this dry. So I am not a process crafter at all whatsoever, but I wanted to see this canvas through. So I definitely waited until it dried completely before moving on to the next step. Okay, so in all technicalities, this canvas is finished. Um, but I am going to say this out loud and it is going to sound so silly. But do you know when like white doesn't always seem white, like it kind of has like a grayish undertone or it kind of looks blue or whatever. Like it's not as crisp and white as you want it to be. That's kind of how this like drywall stuff dried. I mean, you can tell, look at the canvas, it looks white, right? But like, it's not as crisp as what I want it to be. So I have this dry, this paint that was in the garage that the hubs used for like a different home renovation project. And it's flat white paint or like primer. Um, but I love the way that it shows up. Like it's like a really crisp and white color. Anyways, it is like a Valspar white paint flat thing. Just took it out of my garage. I'm opening it up and I am just gonna smear this all over the entire canvas. So all over the sides, all over the front. I'm just gonna dump it on there and I'm gonna repaint this and just not, you know, just paint over all the texture. Again, technically this canvas is done, but I just kind of wanted to give it a little bit more crisper white color. I don't even know if it actually makes a difference. It did to me. I don't, I don't know if it does for you. <laughs> Okay, and as promised, because I do have a finished sign, look at how stinking cute that, that that is. And this is my guest bedroom. It is really small. This is a queen size bed. 
It has a dresser, a TV, <laughs> and that's it. I mean, it's, it's a really small bedroom. So I didn't have any type of wall decor on here, but we've been here for three years and I've not decorated this bedroom at all. But this right here turned out so good. What do you think? Do you like it? Now, the initial cost of the canvas, and then I used two pieces of wood with my laser cutter. Outside of that, everything else that I used, I had on hand anyways. So like this ended up being a really cheap DIY project. And like, look at the texture of this canvas. Look at all those letters. Okay, so what do you think? Do you think that this was a DIY yay or a DIY fail? What's your opinion? We're gonna go over here and look at it this way. Look at all that texture that's on there. And the letters kind of look like they are one with the canvas. I love it. And you know what? That mess up that I did right there with the sun and the waves ended up turning out really good. I'm actually obsessed with the way that this canvas turned out. All right, y'all. I sure hope I inspired you to create and I will see you later.